Hello, and welcome back. We're going to cover our final topic related to gene transfer, and that final topic um, are going to be transposons. And transposons are sometimes referred to as jumping genes because what happens with transposons and transposable elements is you get bits of DNA that can be moved around within the genome of an organism. You can also have bits of genes that get removed from an organism. And in the case of bacterial cells, when you remove that bit of DNA, it'll circularize and become a plasmid. That plasmid can be um, essentially excluded by the bacteria and released out into the environment. Then that bit of DNA can be picked up by another organism. Now, the concept of transposons was discovered by a scientist. And that scientist was Barbara McClintock. Now, Barbara McClintock had absolutely nothing to do with bacteria or prokaryotic cells. What Barbara McClintock studied was corn or maize, if you prefer to call it that, okay? But what she was interested in and intrigued by was that with corn, you could see some different color kernels that would come up. And now, when you go to the grocery store in and around Halloween and Thanksgiving time, you've got all that neat harvest corn that has all those different patterns and colors so instead of just being yellow, you've got some reds and some browns, and you've got some of the corn kernels that are a little mottled and may have multiple colors. The reason for the different colors and the modeling that you see are transposons or transposable elements. Because what happens, you get essentially bits of DNA that kind of jump around in the genome, and that influences gene expression. So the differences in color depend on where those transposable elements sit down in the maize genome. All right. Now, Barbara McClintock discovered transposable elements um, a very long time ago, relatively speaking. Now, she did her work back in the 1950s, 1960s, and it was a good 30 years before her work was recognized with a Nobel Prize. And that's in part because what she was studying at the time was very controversial. And a lot of scientists didn't believe her. Now, and because of her gender, a lot of scientists didn't believe her because she was female. However, she persisted and she showed the scientific community that yes, there are such a thing as jumping genes it's present in corn, and when they looked, they found transposable elements in other organisms as well. Now granted, with bacteria, this isn't the most common mode of gene transfer, but it's interesting, okay? Because what ended up happening and what causes those genes to jump is an enzyme. Oh, let's spell that right, transposase. That transposase enzyme is going to cause the DNA to jump. So what happens, it's an enzyme that will um, essentially cut the DNA and remove a bit of gene. And then it puts it in somewhere else in the genome, okay? So those transposable elements, or that transposase, is flanked by inverted repeats. We haven't talked about what an inverted repeat is yet, but essentially it's a DNA sequence that has a particular order. In this case, I just use the alphabet, A, B, C, D, and then you get a mirror image of it, D, C, B, A, okay? If you wanted to consider it instead, you know, 
using actual nucleotides. You could have ATCG and go CGTA, okay, if we're talking about the true genetic code. So essentially it's a bit of DNA that's one sequence forward, flips it, and you've got the exact mirror image. That's our inverted repeat. That enzyme is flanked by those inverted repeats. And essentially what happens when that transposase is activated, it cuts out of the genome and it sometimes takes a gene with it and it, that transposase then goes and inserts itself into another place within the genome, taking that gene with it. So it changes the location of the gene. So it, in the case of organisms that have multiple chromosomes, it might move a gene from chromosome 1 to chromosome 4. Now with bacterial cells, you don't have multiple genomes, multiple chromosomes. You've got one um, chromosome, but you can still move things around within that one chromosome. Alternatively, what can happen? That gene can essentially come out and circularize into a plasmid, and that plasmid is released or excluded from the bacterial cell and can be picked up by other organisms. Now, transposons and the activation of tra transposons tends to be relatively rare in bacterial cells, but it can happen. Okay, and it's a method of essentially moving things around within the, its own genome or losing bits of DNA that can then be transferred to other organisms. So it's really what we're talking about with transposons here. We've got, <coughs> excuse me, mobile genetic elements. Okay. So this one isn't a real long video because um, I think the other three tend to happen more frequently in prokaryotic cells, but it's really neat how this all came about. And Barbara McClintock was very passionate about her work and stood by what she did and ultimately ended up winning the Nobel Prize for it. So I think that's an interesting story. All right, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please let me know.